The underpainting filter does a couple of things to your image. It applies a texture, and then it slaps a heavy coat of paint over the texture. When an artist underpaints an image, he or she generally roughs out the look of the painting using a simplified palette, fewer colors, and very little detail. The actual picture is then painted on top. Some artists use acrylic paints for the underpainting, then paint with oils over. Some artists like the interplay between the colors applied below and those added later. And some artists underpaint simply to avoid the intimidation of a blank, empty, white canvas. Let's take a look at the somewhat complex interface of the underpainting filter using Photospin's image number 007067. The brush slider determines the amount of detail in the image. The larger the brush, the broader the strokes, and therefore the less detail in the image. Interestingly, the texture coverage slider seems backward. A low value covers the texture more rather than less. You'll see less of the texture showing through the paint with the low setting than you will with the high setting. To properly evaluate your texture decisions, you'll likely want to start with the light pop-up menu. For the initial evaluation, set the setting to top left. That's the most familiar view in Photoshop for various textures. After selecting and scaling the texture, you can try different light angles to see which is most flattering to your image. Afterward, you might want to readjust your settings for the brush size and texture coverage sliders, too. The texture pop-up offers the usual four suspects, brick, burlap, canvas, and sandstone, and, of course, you can load a texture using the menu to the right of the texture pop-up. The Presets Textures folder in Photoshop offers textures, and you can create your own 8-bit grayscale PSD files to use as textures. Generally speaking, when working with underpainting for an underpainting effect, you'll use the canvas setting. The scaling and relief, if they are not prominent enough because of the pixel dimensions of your image, you could switch to burlap and use a lower scaling and relief setting. You'll see that burlap is pretty much like canvas, only a much more rugged texture. So save that for images with very high pixel counts. You might want to try brick if you're looking for the effect of, say, graffiti or a montage on a wall. But generally speaking, with underpainting, you'll use canvas or perhaps the burlap setting. So generally speaking, you'll use light top left, canvas as your texture, scaling and relief to suit the pixel dimensions, and an appropriate brush size and texture coverage to help make the appearance of underpainting. Now, for an even better way to work with underpainting, duplicate your background layer, hide the top copy, and apply underpainting to the lower copy. Once you've applied underpainting, make the upper layer visible again and reduce the opacity to about 50%. As you can see, this gives the effect of having underpainted the canvas and then added the painting on top, rather than just having the underpainting standing alone. In an artistic workflow, this would be an unfinished painting. The canvas will be underpainted, but the actual artwork would not have been added. By adding a copy of the original photograph with an opacity of 50%, you are, in fact, adding the effect of painting the artwork over the underpainted canvas. So, whether you use this technique to create a finished work, or if you want the look of a half-finished underpainted canvas, the underpainting filter is your choice.